BD syringe pump training. For the purpose of this training, I am using a CC syringe pump, but this training will also apply to your GH syringe pump as both pumps use the same platform. So before setup of the pump, just make sure they're clean, intact. There's no cracks that any fluid can come into. On the back of the pump, you'll see that this attaches on using your integrated pole clamp onto your IV stand. You've got your handle here for carrying or transporting, and you've got your socket for charging. Best off having the pumps charge at all times, but back, battery backup is four to six hours depending on your rates. Now to power on this pump, you've got your power on key, which is the white key. I'm going to press that once and it'll start going through its self-testing. Now my best advice for this pump is to follow what's on screen as it's actually quite intuitive. So we'll follow what the messages are telling us. So first off there, it's asking me to clear the setup. So if it's a new patient, I'm always going to say yes and default everything back to a zero. On screen now, it is telling me to load my syringe. So to load the syringe, I'm going to bring my clamp down and bring back my drive, which holds the plunger. Now to bring back the drive, I'm just going to pull on the lever fully with my thumb and bring that back out of the way, leaving room for my syringe. Now the pump will recognize syringes five to 60 ml and it will also recognize your syringe type. So I'm just going to put the wings of the syringe in between the two pieces of plastic. If it holds itself, it's incorrect. Then I'm going to bring your clamp up to hold it in position and then I'm going to bring in my drive. Now, when I'm bringing the drive in, just make sure that your lever is down fully because you want to go over the plunger. You don't want to push the plunger. I can see now my confirm flashing on screen. So it's happy that my syringe is loaded correctly. So I'll confirm that and I can move on to the next step. So on the screen now, it's telling me that I need to set my rate. So my rate is going to be in this section of the pump with the arrows underneath. I've got a double arrow going up in a single, double arrow going down and a single. Double arrow is quicker, so if I keep my finger down on that without lifting, it does go in increments of 0.1 for the first a mil, and after that will fly up. So that's my rate of three. That's all the information you need to put into your syringe um, pump your rate and it's going to recognize the amount of volume in the syringe. So once I'm happy, I'm going to press the green to run to start my infusion. Now the pump will keep infusing until it reaches a near end of infusion point of the syringe. However, if you want to put a volume to be infused in, you can. So on the front of the pump here, I've got volume, which is my 24 hour flu balance. And I've got my VTBI, which is my volume to be infused. So if I press, my volume to be infused. You can see here it starts there at not a mils, my arrows up and down again, and I can input my volume to be infused. So for example, I want to put in a volume of 10. I'll put in my 10, press OK, and the pump will ask me what you want it to do once the 10 mils has infused. So I've got my stop, keep the vein open or continue. So for example, you can highlight your continue or keep the vein open and press OK to confirm it. If you need to change the rate of your pump, you have two options. You can either put your pump on hold using your orange key. So again, green is to run oranges if you need to put it on hold and you can titrate your rate that way and press your green again to restart your pump. Or you can titrate without putting the pump on hold, just using your arrows up and down, again, adjusting the rate and again, pressing your green to confirm it. Now, if you titrate without putting your pump on hold and you forget to confirm your new rate, the pump will call you back. So the advantage of that being is you're not stopping your medication to your patient, you'll titrate, confirm your new rate. If you don't confirm it, it keeps infusing at the old rate. Another um, important feature of the pump obviously is your bolusing. Okay, so over on this side, we have four keys. The one with the syringe on it here is your bolus key. So again, I'm just going to press that bolus key once. I've got a default rate of 500 mils per hour, but this can be adjusted again using your arrows up and down. So you can speed up or slow down the rate of your bolus infusion. To administer the bolus, you've got your flashing bolus key here. So I'm just going to hit the soft key underneath. Keep your finger down. And the amount here is the amount that the patient is receiving. Okay, so you'll give your prescribed bolus and then you can take your finger back off and that then is included in your 24 hour fluid balance on the front of the pump. 
This button here is your silence the alarm. We've got a two tier system. If it's orange in color, the pump tends to keep infusing. So it's more of an alert that your battery is running low, things like that, or you're near your end of infusion. If you get a red indicator, so for example, if I bring down my clamp here, all right, you get a red indicator and the pump will actually stop infusing, okay? So what you need to do is you'll silence your alarm, read your message on screen, it'll tell you exactly what's wrong with it. You can cancel that and then restart your pump again. All right. Restart. Behind your options key, this is going to vary depending on how your pump is set up, okay? But in there, typically you will have your adjustable alarm volume, your vent logs, um, and if your pump is on hold, so for example, with my orange key, I put it on hold, go to my question mark. You may also have a drug library in there, or you've also got the option of your volume to be infused over time if you need the pump to do the rate calculation for you. Last key is for your pressure levels. The pressure levels are going to be defaulted, your alarm level is here, to a level four, which is your typical adult level. And again, if that needs adjusting, you'll just go to your pressure level button, and using your arrows up and down, adjust your, your pressure level. Be aware the higher you go, the less sensitive it'll be to an occlusion. The lower you go for your alarm level, the more sensitive it'll be to an occlusion in the line. If you do get an occlusion, the pump has a back off, so it'll go into a reverse pumping action. So for example, if there was a kink in the line, you released it, there won't be a buildup of drug to give a post-occlusion bolus to the patient. To turn your pump off, you can put the pump on hold. You're gonna use your power on and power off key. So again, your white key, and you keep your finger down until the bar fills, and that's your pump fired off. To remove your syringe, which can be done whether the pump is on or off, you just bring down your clamp, and again, release your drive. So again, pull your lever down using your thumb, and remove your syringe. For storage, put your clamp back up, and your drive back in. For any cleaning advice, um, please refer to the directions for use.